It's Superhero, and you're listening to Inspirado Projecto. started making espresso. I didn't realize you were recording. That, you know, this is what's so interesting right now about Anchor. You're you're picking up some some sounds now. Like you're intuitively. I don't think you're. I don't know. if... This just made espresso. Do you see how fast that was? That just made espresso. Guys? Yeah. Do we agree that we're gonna keep this place locked up regardless? Yes. Because there's too much shit in here. I agree. I will do that. I'm gonna drink this espresso in a second. This is what it's a, what's crazy here, future self and other listeners. Okay, uh, I I might be. I might make it out there. I'm working on espresso situations. Espresso, espresso. Have you ever seen podcast. Mulholland Drive? Yeah, I, I came up with this. Uh... Oh, God, this just smells so good. The air, everything smells so good. I just this farted. just started <laughs> This just started recording all by itself. It was gonna, so is crazy. Make it? it just started recording all by itself. But itself. I just said, <laughs> you make it to the podcast? <laughs> yeah, well, you, I can always call you anonymous. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. The head of anonymous Rob, is anonymous here. Anonymous Jones. <laughs> oh, boy. That's right. It's so funny during this song, the a Jones for this, a Jones for that, and you're like Jones. <laughs> it's so funny. Those little, those little wild cards you throw in there, and it's so funny too how like you you start flinging your what is it now? And I don't bounce, 
doom, pow, and you're like that that drummer dude from that that. Oh, reminds me of that drummer like dude from him. The wrong it reminds me of him, yeah, because yeah. it's like the most minimal drumming, and you're going this great yeah. effort to do this I like t- tiny t- minimal yeah, thing. I totally do that just it's to so be, funny, dude. Just, that's why I do it's it. like this awesome, unnecessary. Like this guy is like sledgehammering we call that a fly. Entertainment. Well, it's it's like one would look at it like holy cow, he's putting so much. Yeah, yeah. entertainment, and it's like you got with a sledgehammer the, and you're trying to hit a fly, the Chris and it's Marley great. Quotes. Yeah, yeah, entertainment. entertainment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Enter- and welcome. it's so. And then you're you stand up, that. and then you're like, blah, 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 blah. like when you stand up, it's so funny because it's like, oh man, the orchestrations between everything. I keep hearing from people. The sailors at the wrong gig. Oh my gosh. Oh man. People are just like you know what? There's so much to look at on the stage at once. We don't know what to look at well, first. I'm trying to die. And that's so what's I'm so not great. To make it too much. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but it's fun to I'm just see my third Michelada here. Oh yeah, Michelada. Wait, isn't that what they say at the end of uh, All Night Long? You like Michelada? Down, down, down. I'm getting caught in the rain. Shown, shown, shown. Don't you run out of memory? Oh, thing? this saves up in a cloud, oh, the grand old cloud. Oh, so you don't even have to. Delete. I thought you were actually talking about his personal brain. This, this, <laughs> <laughs> that would be great if I could put a hard drive in there. Do you have to pay for a few it? terabytes? No, this is completely free. Really? I and the and um, this was so weird. This just went on by itself, recording the podcast. I glance over and I see going three, four, five, and I'm like, okay, my podcast has now reached that point of where AI is aware of itself. Oh my god, <laughs> good job, shonk. But I think my podcast is coming to a point where like AI realizes itself and it just starts recording anyway. I'm right. like, what the heck? Like, this has happened three times so far. Oh. Hello, is this Domino's? Oh yeah, they're here, everyone. Ah. Hey. Hi, thank you. So down service? Do we need room service? Turn down service. Uh, turn, turn, down. Down. turn down service. Oh, oh no, but turn down, down for what? Turn down for what? Turn down for what? She said turn down service. Yeah. Espresso. Espresso. It's a perezzo. Right? I'm going to have a few of these shots before I get up on stage tomorrow. I like those glasses. Thank you, man. I'm rather attached to them. Welcome to Halloween. Is that your new ones? Yeah. They look just like your old ones. They do. Oh. I know. These have... The, these oh, have... Chocolates. Chocolate. What? Astounding. Chocolate. Thank you. I mean... Oh, yeah. No big whoop. Thank you. I mean... Where? Where are these chocolates? Where are these chocolates, you guys? Because we can afford it. Where are, the, where are these chocolates you're talking about? Right there on the table. See where the waters are? Yes. And this? No, these are Revos. Oh, I thought these were donuts. (laughs) Okay. I see. Would you like one? Yeah. Okay. Okay, boys. Get your gold nuggets. Oh, that's right. Isn't that funny if you eat it, then it's like, here. Oh, here you go, Chaz. They're only $17.50 a piece if you eat them. They're only fit, they're only seventeen fifty a piece if you eat them. Oh, the dark chocolate there. Ooh, there's the fairy dark chocolate. Mmm. 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 I thought that was Harry Potter. I could recognize that snowball fight anywhere. Hey. Hey. You. Hello. Oh, thank you very, very much. I rather like this espresso machine. Um, now, can you please tell me how to work this espresso machine? Can I just use a regular, you know, those little glasses? Oh, yeah. Because I know there are two sizes. Do, do I somehow push this yeah. in here or something? Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, and then that's that's the bigger one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. Okay, my premonition was correct. Do you need more? More? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, please. Let's hear more. Oh, my goodness. Uh, thank, 
Do you want? Oh, good. Thank yeah. you so much. Okay. Wow, Andy. Wow, wow, wow. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, 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 yo. I see peanuts. I see peanuts. I'm going to have to grab some. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I want to get back to the strangeness that this podcast just started by itself. No prompting. It just happened. It just happened. Well, it's a large facility we're in here. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I gotta say, so Revo, ever since this AI creature decided to uh, start recording on my behalf, on my behalf, I didn't record, I wasn't there to record, or rather, I wasn't recording the moment that we all open up these boxes of Revo glasses and uh, everyone looked through these and was able to pick 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 one and it all just kind of fell into place with everyone getting these glasses and we've been oh my god I've been anticipating these glasses for a long time ever since I heard about Revo wanting to sponsor us so <coughs> Uh, this guy of Revo somehow booked us this party out here in San Vincent. It's like a winery, golf course. Four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four rooms. Two beds in each room. It's, uh, it's like its own little bungalow. It's um, very, very impressive. It's very, very impressive. So, that Revo guy, he brought us these sunglasses. And we all tried them on. Here's your fun fact. The world-famous Hollywood sign was put in place in 1923 by a real estate developer. Originally meant to stay in place for only 18 months to advertise properties, it originally read Hollywood Land. The sign remained in place long after it was intended to. And in 1949, the word land was removed. Stay tuned for to Inspirato Projecto for more fun facts. Perkins projections, what we're going to do is, again, that's a phenomenal poster designer. And also, there's the PR that you do for a film. So you can get promoted, you can get, you can get sold, uh, and get more social activity on it. He's, he's going to help expound that. He's got some ideas of good posters and bad posters. How many people have done posters for their films? Is that something you guys think after fact, or is that something you relish? Mm -hmm. yeah. Just hold it closer to your mouth so they can hear you. Right, because it can actually make or break your film. I, mean, I guess it could. Has a bad poster ever made a good film bad? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. That's a good question. What was that one? It was with the, uh, the Mars thing? It was with um, 
it, it, it was such a horrible marketing campaign. Which one? What was that three or four years ago? It was the kid from um, Friday Night Lights. Uh, oh, the, the Mars movie. The Mars movie, yeah. yeah. Uh, Yes, it was. It was, it was just, everybody knew it was a great science fiction. I'll, I'll Google in a second, but um, the, nobody really knew about the. If you knew the film, you want to see it, but it failed so miserably at the box office because the, the posters looked so uninteresting, which was a bad deal. Well, I, I, I guess this kind of topic kind of came came to fruition when you know we're in Halloween time, right? So I'm on Amazon looking for good horror movies, you know, and looking for prime stuff or whatnot. And I found myself going, that poster's horrible. No, I'm not going to dedicate 90 minutes to that. No, no. So I feel like that's something that, um, that helps sell it, particularly when you're dealing with uh, independent films. And you, know, you need a good synopsis, and you need a good poster graphic. And I did a uh, campaign for a movie called The Dick. And it was a big dick. And basically, the main character was a cop, and he was awful. And then he got kicked off the force and becomes a private investigator. And then Danny Trejo and uh, Mo Collins in it, or whatever. And uh, he's still trying to get distribution, and he's getting stuff on Amazon. And you know, he's having to come and revisit talking to me because now he needs you know graphics and key art to be able to include it within Amazon so that he can actually sell it. So. There's a variety of different things that you're going to need your key art for that are very, very important. And during the Black Pumpkin uh, premiere uh, last weekend, I was talking with one of my filmmaker friends, and he's like, he makes a comment that that's a producer's job, is that he should be collecting your marketing material as you go. And it shouldn't be the director's job because he's trying to deal with what's ever happening in front of the camera. And I'm just like, that's a very valid point. And that was what I was doing for our feature length films. And we always had our marketing material because I was actually thinking about it. I had a still photographer on set. And in between sets, while the director is actually dealing with the actors and getting all the dialogue and everything squared away, you know, I had the still photographer going, all right, he's in costume, he's ready, we got the lights, we have everything. It should be an afterthought. Because one of the hardest things to do is try to create a very compelling 27 inch by 40 inch poster that's gonna print out when you're pulling in still grabs. And a lot of times you're getting motion blur, and then you have to start being more creative instead of letting more compelling work, or more compelling photography actually do the work for you in selling your film. So it's important that you're actually looking for opportunities while you're shooting it, and you should have a partner that's helping you actually do that when that, you're going through that. And the other thing that uh, Dan brought up was uh, making sure that you were, um, looking for trailer opportunities. Like, how are you gonna sell it? What's gonna be the, the big thing that's gonna sell and make someone actually watch it? Because when I'm sitting there at Amazon trying to convince my wife to watch this whole indie horror movie, she's like, all right, let's see the trailer. <laughs> I'm like, okay, here we go. And so, you know, normally she's like, she likes horror, but she's not gonna, not gonna stand a bad trailer. Mm -hmm. So, and I feel like that's kind of important from a whole entire campaign standpoint and one of the things that um, with the Black Pumpkin is that they had a font that I thought was a really, really good font that they used in the title design for Black Pumpkin and that we brought it over for the, uh, for the poster design. And one of the things, like one of my favorite places to go for fonts is called defont.com. And there's a lot of like font artists on there. And choosing one of those things and actually keeping track of that so that you can distribute that to your marketing avenues so that you have a consistent look and feel and you have a really good uh, font that's actually driving your genre home. You know, because they selected one that was very, you know, kind of hand-painted, kind of like evil looking, and that sells, that sells your movie, and that sells the genre that you're going with. You know, and so coming up with, a, and the font helps a lot because they have search filters that will tell you, you know, this is the style of font. Like you can go grunge font, or you can go like futuristic font, and like, so selecting your font is very important from a marketing standpoint because it tells the user what type of genre that you're dealing with. How would you decide that? How do you decide what font works good with? Well, one of the things that the font has is that you can put whatever your title is of the film in there, and then it will showcase it, and then I just scroll through. And normally when I'm dealing with clients or whatnot, it's just like, all right, I like this one, I like this one, and I like this one, and I'll send them links, or I'll send them image grabs of what that font actually looks like. 
you know, a lot of times it's very difficult and like you have to kind of come up with a consensus. Because you know, it's a collaborative effort when you're doing filmmaking, so you have to sell everybody on your font. You have to sell everybody on your poster design. You have to sell everybody on your credits, and it's, and it's a challenge, it is. So being like communicating with that and go having a back and forth and being able to see like different concepts and like so I try to give options to my clients where I'm just like all right this is the font that I was thinking or this was the type of look that I was thinking and I try to do it in a way that's really fast so that they can take a look at it and they can yay or nay it for one reason or another so I mean that's just kind of the creative process at least from a poster design standpoint you know and I'm a nerd and I love it and like I'll go to the theater and my wife's like let's go and I'm like look at the grain <laughs> <laughs> that the field's awesome I'm like shut up and eat popcorn you know so you know I'm a nerd and I love doing it and that's what I do on the side and like, I do web development at uh, an agency here in town and uh, we do stuff for how to train your dragon uh, fast and furious jeopardy wheel of fortune so I do some game development and things like that so you know, I love doing all this stuff, and it was great being back here for the Black Pumpkin screening just because I haven't been in this type of environment for a long time. I'm, you know, in the rear of the gear of the nerds, you know, so I don't ever really get out to do this type of stuff. Um, but, you know, it's great. And so when we were discussing this topic and, like, coming up with, like, what we would actually be discussing, um, the, the thought of having, like, a best poster award was... That's a great idea. We have... 38 awards tonight. <laughs> yeah, I don't, the poster award's probably not going to be involved with that. I don't know if that actually... We, we, we didn't make it because it was a, I didn't learn about the idea. We, we were out of awards, actually. We would have put it in there. <laughs> but, but, um, so the awards ceremony is going to take till 3 o'clock in the morning. So Because <laughs> <laughs> we're out of the step, we're having the MC, and I go, how long is that going to take if everybody takes... Okay, I'm not going to worry about it, so we'll get through it. Uh, but Matt had a great idea about having poster art because that's just a very important part. And he was kind of looking at the posters coming in, like getting all excited. It's like, dude, it's, it's a poster. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but the same thing, like, as I'm an actor, I look at acting. You, if you're a director of cinematography, you do what you know best. That's where, you, that's where we're all collaborative, that's where we're all here, that's where we're all filmmakers. Yeah, and, and it just kind of goes back to, you know, you're trying to sell your film. So you want people to be able to click on it when you're at Netflix or you're in Amazon or any of those things. And during that process when I was actually trying to, because uh, I was looking at the website and I was looking at the, uh, the program, they were kind of small. So I couldn't really make a determination of, you know, if I liked a particular poster from the lineup or whatever. And I pulled a bunch of the examples that I thought did a really, really good job that I would have been like, no changes, you're fine. But one of the things that during that process when I was searching that some people, you know, filmmakers really need to think about is SEO. And there were some that was like, I did a search on their title and it was right there, you know, right up at the top. And then others I had to dig. And I shouldn't have to dig. And you should be wanting to own that first page. Like my name's Matthew M. Jones. You know, there's a billion Matt Joneses out there and I lose Matt Jones no matter what. But I'm the number one Matthew M. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> and there's this guy in Arizona, he's a lawyer, and he keeps fighting. He must hate me. <laughs> I, I, just, I just keep outperforming him. You know, I always do this SEO joke. It's just like, yeah, I'm just going to go around and kill all the Matt Joneses so that I'm cool, and I'm the number one Matt Jones. You know, so, but you should be owning what your name is. You should be owning what your title is. And a lot of that has to do with uh, creating a website. We're going to take a slight technical break. Okay. Okay. Just, just <coughs> so what we're trying to do is get some posters that he looked through our catalog and found they were really good, or maybe they were lacking what was. I mean, of course, everybody's opinion. Everybody's got one opinion or another, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, how many people? Uh, how much time does people spend on their poster art when they do posters? Do you spend a lot of time? Is it okay? I have someone else do it. <laughs> Sure. Um, so I've been lucky to work with Matt on Bloody Bobby and Black Pumpkin. And one of the things that I learned from Bloody Bobby is the poster art um, can help you sell your film, but it can also get you financing for your next film. So as soon as you start, as soon as I get that idea of what I want to write about next, I'm already throwing a poster together. Because all these investors or executive producers, they're very visual and that's what they want to see. So you can sell people on a script based on like the first 10 pages 
in a really cool uh, picture that sells your film. So it's very important. And um, luckily, I've been I've had really good luck working with Matt because um, the Black Pumpkin poster was just awesome. We got so many compliments on that um, during the premiere on Friday. Wait, I got something to say. I got I was just inspired. Have any of you guys seen the documentary about Canon, Canon Films? Have any, okay, so um, those of us who grew up in the 80s, a lot of us saw uh, Missing in Action, uh, Commando, Death Wish, those kinds of movies. Like that, those were all created by Canon. And uh, those, these were a couple of brothers who came over from Israel, and they wanted to make American movies. So it was really interesting to see what their thoughts of um, really represented America um, which I guess they came to the conclusion it was a lot of explosions and uh, <laughs> tan people and <laughs> boun bouncing breasts. Oh, you have more to yeah, say? Yeah, real quick. <laughs> so what was awesome about Canon is they would go to um, these film markets with no script, no um, movie, and sell their movie. They had the rights to Spider-Man. And they were selling investors on Spider-Man and Masters of the Universe. And they would have just... Not, they would have like a script that they would have a title, and they go, oh, put Charles Bronson on this poster, and we'll sell it. So it's all visual. And if you haven't seen the movie, um, it's on Netflix called Electric Boogaloo, and it, it's pretty awesome, especially if you grew up in the 80s with those movies. Where are we go. We have a Google. <laughs> Did you make that Google poster? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who made the Google? Who, who made the Google font? Well, <laughs> okay. So these are the films and posters. How many? I'm not sure. The filmmakers are up here. We're going to show your posters. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, so these were the ones that, when I was going through it, I felt intrigued to actually see. And I figured we could talk about each on our individual ones and how you can utilize specific graphics to be able to generate um, a genre feel. I really particularly like this one because they used a lot of like you know broken glass and distressed imagery, and it's something a technique that I use a lot. Um, so I thought this was a pretty good one. Um, and I like the font usage and how they use forever. And I would imagine that their URL for their website could actually be really unique and available. So that would be, that was another one of my favorites. On that one, can we go back for a second? Yeah. So when you get laurels, uh, is that a great place to put them or do you put them, what's the best way to space laurels in your poster? Uh, it, it really kind of depends on the artwork and where you've got negative space, where it actually works. Um, and you know, sometimes you can have so many laurels that kind of ruins your art, but, <laughs> you know, but it's also enticing someone to actually come and, and, and see it. But I don't know how important that's going to be on Netflix or Amazon. Um, you really want your imagery to drive home um, and probably list that within the descriptive copy and not have it cluttered like this. I, I mean, it helps. It definitely helps, especially if you, you've gotten to some, you know, really nice film festivals. Like the Pal, awards. Yes. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, that gives me a second thought. I was like, all right, that's a good indie, you know, and they've got a bunch of different laurels. So you definitely want to have that on there. So it's also important that you have a good communication with whoever's designing this and that you've got a really good Photoshop document that you can edit and that you can revise. And sometimes um, you'll be in a situation where whoever does your artwork for you disappears. <laughs> so make sure that they're not the only one holding on to that PSD. You know, and one of the things that I always try to do is I try to, you know, put it somewhere where they can download it and they can have it on their archive. And it's your responsibility as a filmmaker because it may take you like two years to get distribution on it. And like I said, McDick had to come back to me for, because um, poster, you know, 27 by 40, but when you go on Amazon, you're talking horizontal. You know, so you need a layout that's going to be aspect ratio specific for whatever you're trying to do your distribution on. So it's important to not have flattened artwork. No, like JPEGs are good for when you're shuttling things around and sending them to the film festivals. But make sure that you have a PSD where you can move some stuff around so that you can start fitting it into different um, graphics 
so that you can get into distribution. You know, and it's also important for, you should always have like a Facebook page for your production. That's the cheapest, easiest way to go about it. So key art drives all of this. So you, you want your poster, and, but you want your Facebook cover photo, or you want your Twitter cover photo, or you want Instagram posts. You know, and this aspect ratio doesn't really fit within an Instagram post. You want something that's more square. So then again, it goes back to generating graphics so you have a continued presence within social media and on the web and so that you can move some stuff around. So this one would probably be fine because you can crop it right at her forehead and right underneath her chin, and then you've got an Instagram post. So one of the things, and one of the notes I have on here is like industry trends for um, studios, is that studios are kind of going away from like individual websites. So it's like transformers.com, that's franchise. So they keep their franchise websites alive. You know, uh, we currently um, do maintenance on the Jurassic Park website. But, you know, even Halloween has got their own website. I'm trying to think of like an example of just like a one-off. Like uh, night school. You know, they're probably not gonna have a one-off website for that. Mm -hmm. And they'll carry that underneath their production company. So I, I'm not sure who does it, but it's like warnerbrothers.com slash night school. And I guess that's another, that was another concept that uh, um, just driving this forward from the independent film standpoint is that I keep doing the same website over and over for again for my clients. And what they really need is they need a production company that's got subdomains. So it's like the last one that I did, I did for someone who I've probably done five websites for. His name's Noel Orpert. And he's an indie film guy and actor. And uh, he's got a production company, it's laughinghouseproductions.com. But he's got like five different projects that he's supporting at any particular time. He's got like a web series, he's got like a uh, feature length film, and then he's also got like a couple shorts. And it's just like, all right, well, stop paying for all those domain names. That's like 50 bucks a year. You know, it's like focus your money on actually making the films. So you have your production company, so it's laughinghouseproductions.com slash whatever your title is. You know, so, and then you have support graphics with it there. So like Warner Brothers would be warnerbrothers.com slash, uh, you know, night school. And then basically you got your trailers, you got your phone, like there's, there's standard EDK stuff that you're gonna have in any particular website. And that's gonna be your trailer, that's gonna be your gallery items, it's gonna be your synopsis and maybe a couple bios. And you really don't go, have to go much further than that. And really what the key is is that you want an SEO like bookmark. So that when you know, someone's trying to find your poster or trying to find what you did, that you're coming up right away. So it's always key is that you need to be on Facebook, you need to be on Twitter, you need to be sharing links towards stuff. And you don't want to be doing it every day and every hour because that's annoying and then people start tuning out. So. <laughs> Um, so that's, um, but you have to be kind of consistent on how you're doing it so that you can get your SEO up so that your name and your productions are always at the top. And, you know, it may be a dead product, like, you know, you took it all the way through the festivals, you know, you got your distribution deal and not much has happened with it but it gives you a bookmark for when you're gonna do your next thing. So it's always about building your portfolio. Always have your portfolio ready, and always have it. You have a question? Yeah, with the SEO, do you get the top results because you're really active in social media and whatnot, or are you paying for a service to keep you at the top of the list? Um, but mostly it's organic. And so you can tell Google, like, let you know when, like, and this, our studio clients do this too, is that they'll pay for Jurassic World you know, and you can see it and they have a different color on it. Then the organic searches happen underneath it. So when they do an actual campaign or whatnot, they'll pay up top to get it no matter what. But then the organic stuff happens below it. And I don't have a budget of Warner Brothers, so I have to do things organically. And when it's organic, it's basically you're sharing and you're getting traffic and you're getting cross references. And that's how the Google Analytics work. So that's why it's important to share your news, to share your images, to share your trailer, and constantly be posting stuff about what you're doing. And the things that, so they're moving more away from like actual full concept website development and doing more social media stuff. And it's more meme generated now. So it's like clips 
of you know from the movie with like you know headlines or whatnot. And actually, Ozark's been doing a pretty good job. And a designer friend of mine, she's at an agency here in the Valley, and they've been cranking those things out. And they have a really good, and I bring that up because they also have a really good font selection. And then they do graphics. I don't know if you watch the show, but they give you clues at the beginning of the show, which are illustrations of what's happening. So me and my wife are just guessing, you know. It's like, oh, there's a baby. That's awful. That's a bad sign. <laughs> <laughs> Something bad's going to happen there. So, and they use that as part of their social media graphics also. And they're like, whenever there's an episode, and they release everything so you can binge watch it, but they kind of are still putting out things about each of their individual episodes. So that, that type of concept will work for, you know, a web series or any type of episodic series. But like when it comes like down to like a feature length film or a short film or whatever, just try to find like specific highlights. And you don't have to do a full blown trailer. Most people won't sit through a minute. But you can get them for 10 seconds. So if you have a really good like punch out scene, just kill that <laughs> sucker, you know? Just wham, you know, title design. You know, and you've got somebody who's like, all right, I want to see some punch outs. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's so see. A trailer for less than a minute. Yes. Right. Yeah, and that's basically how most of our studio clients are, are, are approaching this, is that they're doing small little clips and, you know, then hitting them with graphics, hitting them with the, you know, when the release date is, where you can view it, things like that. So Because everybody's looking on their phone or their computer, mm -hmm. you really want to look at computer screen for attention span is purely going. What do you do about, you get a uh, filmmaker, they have credits, people, had villain and that type of thing, how do you deal with that? Well, I mean, if, if it's a household name or whatever, you definitely want to hit that. Obviously, but if it's just like a uh, independent film and it's people no one knows, and how do you handle the, all the politics that happens with? You know, a good billing block at the bottom, I, this one's got it more at the top. Um, you know, that one's hard because like there's so many people that are probably on the same level that are operating within the space that you're operating in. And so you can give, like sometimes you can go by who's got the most screen time, who's got the most dialogue. Um, but I guess when it comes down to me, if I don't, if it's not Ryan Reynolds, I don't really, you know, I don't care. <laughs> you know? It's like I want, a, I want a vampire, I want, you know, an entertaining story, you know, and I want genre you know, or like topic, and that's gonna drive it for me. It's not gonna be who's not particularly on it. Now, granted, it's just like, this becomes artwork. I got probably 10 of these things sitting on my office wall right now. And it's kind of a record and it's a history, it's a bookmark of your life. Because, I mean, a lot of times you spend over a year on the sucker, it's like, you wanna remember it. So putting your names on there, it's good, but don't go crazy, because then all of a sudden it's just like this huge political thing where it's just like everybody's name, everybody gets credit, you know, and that's what the billing block's for, you know, where it's like director, actor, whatever, and that's where you kind of can kill it, you know, where, and it's not distracting from the artwork and it's not distracting from the message and the genre that you're trying to establish when you're, when you're advertising. The cost to me credits, of course, exactly, just, it's overwatched, you can use too many. Yeah, and, you know, and that will kill your design. Okay, you want to, can we see some more? Yeah, sure. Um, so, I thought this one was this one was a lot of fun to me. I mean, it made me want to watch it. You know, it's like we got some zombies, we got an octopus. <laughs> I, I, I like the font, the texture of the font up there. You know, they threw a drop shadow on it. I mean, this was a nicely produced um, poster. And then if I was on Netflix and I was looking for an octopus movie, I'd be like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> got zombies and octopus. Like, I'm, totally, I'm totally ready for this. And so, I mean, a lot of this looks like a lot of like found imagery. And so that's the one thing is like you can do some photography and then you can start doing Google. You know, just look on Google and like, oh, I need some octopus tentacles. Uh -huh. You know, or it's just like, hey, stand over there. I need a, hey, you're going to be a zombie. <laughs> yeah. You know, outline them and you, make, and you just make it a silhouette and all of a sudden you got zombie people. You know, it's just like. I think the last poster that I did, it was my hand and my wife's hand. It was all about like online dating or whatever. So we weren't in the movies, but I needed hands. I'm like, honey, hold your phone. <laughs> all right. And I got my image, and so I was able to tell a story through you know, some found stuff. And then I basically I just shot it with your phone. So like, and I guess that kind of goes to is that cell phones are so good now, you don't necessarily need a still photographer to come on there to get you some really good um, photography. You can kind of handle it yourself, especially if you're running and gunning. Just make sure you do it. 
so that you have it and that you save it so that you can always circle back on it and be able to generate the, uh, the marketing material that you need. Hey Amen. how important is a tagline, a dark forest slides beneath? For me, I mean, every production package asks for one. And you know, you read anything about like trying to sell your, your production package at the AFM or whatever, they say the tagline is important. I don't know, I feel like synopsis, like the paragraph synopsis is the most important. Because that really kind of tells you what your production is about. You know, I always have one, and it's always good to have something catchy and not too wordy. A dark force lies beneath, you know, that, that sells this to me. So, sums it up in a sentence. Yeah, it, but it's not absolutely necessary. I think, especially from a poster design standpoint, I always have one just because you can be funny in it and do some good copywriting and make it more entertaining and more fun. And, you know, and it, and it kind of drives it home and, and sells it a little bit. And it helps with like kind of the graphical presentation. I think most people, when they're looking at a poster, they're looking for a tagline also. So, but I mean, when it comes to production package, paragraph synopsis has to be really tight, really well worded, good grammar, unlike the internet, <laughs> and uh, you know, and then oh, a good poster design. Also, the name of the film. I mean, like, it can make or break a film, probably. Well, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of like a bad example of a. I don't know, something catchy, something not too wordy. You know, that's always kind of the rule of thumb when you're coming up with stuff. Normally, you know, when I'm writing stuff, the name, the name actually becomes permanent during my script writing process, you know, for me. And, you know, so, that really, sometimes i found that people, when they get the distribution, that the distribution company will want to change their name and they'll change their marketing. And sometimes that's good or bad, and I have an example of that for one of the poster design. Actually, I'll just show it to you since we're talking about it. Well, howdy there, Pilgrim. By now you must know you're listening to the Inspirato Projecto. Hey! Hey there, partner. You can't touch me like that. Hey, man! Yeah, all right! It's okay! I'm with the TSA! Hey! Yeah, man! It's all right! It's okay! Give me a guy! Hey! 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 Well, uh... Since you put a yippee kaye on that ombre, I suppose it's all right if you touch my little duster. All right, man! Hey, way to go! That's the way to be! TSA, all the way! Hey! So, oh my gosh, an idea had just struck me, an idea had just struck me, and then I completely, oh my god, dude, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. <laughs> I tried to get it sound, I really wanted to get that wild audio. But I heard you guys in a distance, which which filled in the blanks, which it filled in the blanks. I'm like, okay, the damn turkeys are not talking. At least it gives the illusion that they're the... Because <laughs> the at-home viewer doesn't know any better. It's like Orson Welles, like, oh, yeah. War of the Worlds. <laughs> oh, my God. We could pretend that we're broadcasting from an actual yacht one day, and there's just no... There isn't actually a yacht. Hey, it could be. <laughs> hey. The audience never knows. Oh, dude, there it is, there it is. Oh, God, this brings back so many memories. And then, uh, you belong in the city. Oh, my God, off the Miami Vice soundtrack. Dude, here we go. Dude. Oh, my God, dude, this is crazy. This is crazy. Oh, my God, Glenn Fry, Smuggler's Blues. Wow, man. Man, if I had a frisbee, I could throw like an ace right Oh, dude. Oh, shit, throw them in the sand. Dude. And then the mountain lion comes running. Do you like throwing frisbee? Do you guys like throwing frisbee? Yeah. My dad and I used to frisbee all the time, and oh my god, it was a great hypnotic thing hey, to dog, get in a sink. My dog likes frisbee. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Actually, we had money. We went to amusement parks. We had more. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I remember <laughs> my dad and I were out in his field for like two hours. My dad and I were in this field for like two hours just throwing this frisbee. And it was just like, shh, shh. What do you see out there? 
you see the, the mound in front of us right here the very this brown mound right here yeah the brown mound then the green bush on the top yeah. of the brown mound oh yeah Look just to the right of it about five feet <laughs> There's a white and gray thing Where? that's standing right there, oh, and it's, dude, it's is that barely... a turkey? I do see it. Where? I see it's hiding in the. I think it's bigger than that. Where? Do you see the green bush? Oh, okay, so here's the hill, and then there's yeah. light green bush. <laughs> and just tiny to the right of it, there's you like a the white? sort of there's a white, white outline, and then there's a head. I don't see it. I head? see it. The little bush right here. Yeah, <laughs> and just to the right of it. Literally just to the right of it. That see, might just a be a white. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. do you it's think that's a white? No, it's moving, dude. Oh, it is. Yeah, it is. It is moving. Fuck yeah, it is. Go out there and get closer. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Throw a rock. That little tiny light bush the right here. Green bush, just to the right of it, about three feet to the right of it. Chaz oh, yeah. is going Everybody to check it out. Us. I'm going to go with Chaz. Don't scare We're going to go with Chaz. We're going to interview Chaz right here. He's the uh, he's tonight's explorer into the unknown. Uh, the, today's program is sponsored by Revo because that's the sunglasses I'm wearing right Dude, now. Dude, look at how beautiful this is. This is absolutely Awesome, dude. <laughs> I was just thinking it looks like a fantasy like like uh, I'm expecting a hobbit to come running around over the hill hey, how are you guys doing <laughs> oh hi Bilbo <laughs> what if it's Dewey McDonald oh my god <laughs> that'd be hilarious if he popped up out of nowhere if he just showed up hey Dave come here come here though yeah Look how pretty this is. Dude. Wow, man. It's like way in the morning. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Look at this. Just want to say that uh, Dave is wearing a t shirt, Steve Miller band, and it's got a Pegasus. This was something I wanted to say earlier, Zed. I've never seen a Sagittarius Pegasus, a man Pegasus, or a woman Pegasus. I've never seen it. Centaur. I'd like to. Dude, there is a wonderful flagpole. I hope you heard that earlier. That thing this is crazy. Doesn't this look like a hobbit village? Because then you see there's, there's the stream and then there's a bridge over there. Yeah. It's like there'd be a troll under it. Maybe this is where Baby, you're told. What if Batman was there? Well, that's what's so crazy. He's got this <laughs> this shirt on with this Pegasus. And I thought to myself earlier, this looks like a fantasy land. So now all of a sudden he shows up. It's fucking cold. Look at you, you're all ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> we're going, right? Yeah. Oh, oh, look, there's a couple oh, there's a couple of them turkeys over there again. Yeah. I try I try to catch their sound. Look at how fast they run. They, they do. look like roadrunners. Uh, yeah. Uh -oh. They stayed a good 30 feet away from me at all times. I think it's funny that Rob's walking around with this loudspeaker. It's just so funny. Yeah. <laughs> he comes walking. Those guys, you guys walking up the path. It was so funny, dude. It looked so funny. You guys come walking up the path, and I hear the, uh, yeah. what was it? The heat is on. <laughs> it was that. Oh, my God, dude. This is great. Oh, my oh, God, dude. You know, it's a very. We're going to be playing for this, for this beauty again. Sperato Perfecto. Yes. Do you realize that you can tell a high-end country club from a low-end country club? What is it? The sand and the in the bunkers are pure white. Oh. Difference. What do they do to make it? Do they bleach it? No. Game changer. Imported. Imported from where? Indonesia? I don't know. Timbuktu. <laughs> That'd be awesome if it was imported all the way from Timbuktu. I've never been on a white sand beach. I've been on a black sand beach in Hawaii. Me neither. Now the question is, do the fish in these ponds swim in clear water or murky brown? That water does not look very clear to me, Jack. You know something, a lot to say while we're all here. It takes a lot to be a beetle. You know, you never know. When you've got, you know, multiple personality going on. you got three brilliant men all working together. It takes a lot to be a beetle. Mm -hmm. And I'm not complaining, you know. Ozzy, what do you think? Sharon! Okay, that's enough of him. He ran off somewhere. Well, it sounds like this is a very popular place for celebrities to hang out at. I've heard it's a you like to have sort of a hideaway. I <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've just been presented with a man, uh, he's a butler, wearing a three-piece suit, holding a tea in his hands. Where'd you come from, sir? 
I don't know, ever so delicately, I just walked up amongst you all and I noticed that you were standing on the tea box. So I thought perhaps you might like to get a little shot off before the sun goes down. <laughs> I love it. I never thought that I would be on a uh, a uh, a golf course at night where a butler walks up with a tea in his hand well, <laughs> to, not, to know, do some late night golfing. I love it. First of all, I'd like to say thank you, Mr. Paul McCartney, for all the great songs all over the oh, years. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ow! The crowd is wild. But would you, seriously, would you like to play? Because uh, my whole world revolves around you getting a tea from me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so that's your job. That's your, that's your livelihood. I'm getting the idea of. Listen, I can't go home until you take this fucking tea from the fucking home, you bitch. Now, now, do you make some money on the side by maybe selling some soaps or uh, putting gum products in the in the uh, bathrooms, like we see with some others, <coughs> other performance artists? I only sell golden teas. So if you oh. want to buy one. That is a golden well, tea by gum, rent, by not, golly. These are for rent, not to keep, oh. but if you want to buy one, it's a whole okay. other story. Okay, okay, so I can rent the... Okay, can you please... I mean, for the low, well, no, low price I put, of... I put it down yeah. on the tea box Oh yeah. for you, so that that way I put the bowl on top of that, Oh. and okay. then you present yourself to the bowl, address oh. the bowl, as they call it. Okay, address the bowl. You address the bowl. What's that process you like? You whack the bowl... What and then you? I take my tea back. It never oh, breaks because okay. it's gold. So I'm renting it for that moment in time. The only thing you can do is bend my gold. Oh, oh gosh, it's bendable. If you, if you gold is malleable. Uh oh. If you bend gold, you can melt it back down. That's why I carry this propane tank with me. <laughs> oh jeez, whoopsie do. That's a large fire there. I almost oh, got your head on fire there. Oh, sorry, my sorry, my Mike. <clears throat> it's okay. That's a fire extinguisher. <laughs> What you mean? Oh my goodness. Who, who, Boy. who is this young lady here? Oh, hello there. Oh my goodness. Sun, are you sun, is, is young sun? Be, is she going to be swinging a club? Well, I'm not we sure what direction she's swinging. Oh, what you God. mean? What? We don't have a club? Oh, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Let's you go belong over in there. the city. You belong in the city. Take my, my goodness. Tea oh, yes. Why, th why, thank you. This is incredible. I now have a, we'll go a goalie. Right the road, yeah? Why, thank you. What was your name again? Paul McCartney. Oh, oh that was Paul McCartney. Oh, my God, ladies and gentlemen. I can't believe it. I never thought we'd run into another celebrity way out here. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll talk later. Da 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 da